If you are a new student diver and you're working towards your open water certification and you're trying to figure out this thing called the recreational dive planner, you've come to the right place. Today we are going to talk about repetitive dive planning and how we use these tables to figure it out. Welcome to Everything Scuba. Hey guys, welcome to Everything Scuba. I am Lyle and we're back for the second part of our recreational dive planner series. Nowadays, most of us use dive computers to go diving, but having a good understanding of the recreational dive planner and the theory behind it is an essential part of becoming a open water diver. You're going to have questions on your open water certification exam all about this stuff. So we're going to help you and try to make it easy. Just to quickly review again, we have our pressure group prior to our first dive. Then we have depth in meters or feet. We have time in minutes. We have a safety stop if required. Then what is our pressure group after that dive? In between the two dives, when we come to the surface and spend time at the surface out of the water, what is our surface interval indicated by SI? Then because we've been out of the water for a period of time, we have off gassed some of that nitrogen. So we'll have a new pressure group before we start the next dive. And then we repeat depth, time, safety stop, and finally, what is our pressure after that second dive? Surface interval is basically the period of time from when I come to the surface and the amount of time that I spend maybe on the boat, on shore, out of the water. And what we're gonna see is along the top, this is the pressure group after the end of my dive. In our previous episode, we showed you on a single dive, we went, we started as an A diver, we then finished the dive and we came out of the water as a K diver before we started our surface interval. In this example, I'm going to choose arbitrarily a 30 minute surface interval. So along here, this is the pressure group at the start of my surface interval. This is K, that's what I was when I came out of the water after my dive. I'm gonna follow this along until I find a box that has 30 to 37 minutes. There's a range in that box. I'm then going to follow that all the way down to F. I have now changed from a K diver to an F diver. Let's talk a little bit about that. I think of my body as a bank or reservoir for nitrogen that gradually fills up with nitrogen as I'm diving, dependent on my depth and my time. So in the example I gave you, we went from an A diver to a K diver. At the end of my dive, I was in pressure group K. As an A diver, we do know that we still carry around some nitrogen in our tissues at under one atmosphere of pressure. But for our purposes, for illustrative purposes, we're going to disregard that nitrogen, essentially think of our body as an empty vessel. We then went diving, and at the end of that dive, we've picked up some load of nitrogen, and we call this residual nitrogen. We measure that in time in minutes, and so we call that residual nitrogen time, or RNT. We then get out of the water and we have a surface interval. During that surface interval, our body is getting rid of the nitrogen that was loaded in, and so we become an F diver at the end of a 30-minute surface interval. And so what has happened is we have degassed, we have gotten rid of some of that nitrogen, but we still have some of that nitrogen remaining in our system. And as I alluded to in the last episode, residual nitrogen time is going to have an ultimate effect on what your non-decompression limit will be for the subsequent dive. So let's do an example to show you how all this works. So in this example, this is the first dive of the day. I am a A group diver, I'm in pressure group A, we're gonna to dive to 75 feet or 23 meters for 25 minutes. And again, this is an imperial dive table. If you're following along in metric, they work exactly the same, just follow along in metric. But 75 feet, I'm going to come along at the depth. There is no 75 feet. I've got a choice between 70 and 80. I'm going to choose 80 because we always want to be conservative. We're gonna overestimate our depth. For 25 minutes, I'm going to come down until I find 25, then I'm gonna come back across and I'm now an N diver. I'm gonna to choose to take a one hour surface interval. So how do we calculate what that does to our pressure group when I'm out of the water for one hour? So let's go back to table two. Pressure group N, we're gonna work all the way across until we find the box that says one hour to 108, then all the way down and I'm now a group D diver after one hour out of the water. For my second dive, I want to dive to 60 feet or 18 meters 
for 35 minutes. How do I calculate what my pressure group is going to be at the end of that dive? And that's where this becomes a little tricky for some people when they're using the RDP. We need some additional information. So I'm going to show you the hard way and the easy way to figure out that. So now I want to introduce you to table three on the back side of your recreational dive planner. Table three, at the top it says pressure group at end of surface interval. Hmm, we've already figured that out, right? So along the top are our pressure groups, all in letters. Uh, along the left side, we have depth. In this instance, it's in feet. If you have a metric table, it would be in meters. We then have different colored boxes. We have white and blue. The white boxes stand for residual nitrogen time. So this table is going to let us figure out what our residual nitrogen time is as a D diver. So what I want to do is I want to come over and find that D diver. We're going to go to 60 feet. And so we're going to come all the way over and we're going to find that our residual nitrogen time as a D diver is 16 minutes. So we're going to use a formula to figure this out. We have RNT residual nitrogen time, which we know is 16 minutes. Then we have ABT, it stands for actual bottom time, meaning how long are we actually going to spend during the dive. And in this instance, we want to spend 35 minutes during that dive at the depth we want to go to. So 35. When we tally those together, we're going to figure out what is called TBT, our total bottom time. And in this instance, that would be 51 minutes. Our total bottom time is going to be 51 minutes. Therefore, we can go back to table one and use 51 minutes to figure out what our pressure group would be at the end of that dive. We also have some blue boxes here. And in this example, we're not actually going to use those blue boxes, but these stand for something called adjusted no decompression limit. And we're going to talk about that in the next video. So back to this example, we're going to take a dive to 60 feet, but this time because we're taking the residual nitrogen time into account, we're going to count up to 51. So 60 feet all the way to 51. There is no 51 here, there's 49 and 52. Again, to be conservative, we're going to overestimate the length of our dive and we're going to choose 52 and we're going to come across and we are going to be a U diver. One thing to pay attention to, we talked about in the last video, within three pressure groups of your non-decompression limit, which is signified by this black box, there are gray boxes. So as we drop down to 52 minutes, we're now in a gray box. That means we should perform a three minute safety stop on the way back to the surface at the end of our second dive. So that was the hard way, now the easy way. Have you ever wondered why all of these numbers don't really, are not in any kind of sequence? And that's because this represents your residual nitrogen time for any pressure group at any depth. You can do this example without having to flip to table three. So if we're gonna use D as the example, for example, if my next dive was going to be to 35 feet, 29 minutes would be my residual nitrogen time. 40 feet, 25, and so on and so forth. So in our example, we want to dive to 60 feet for 35 minutes. So using D, if we come across to 60, the residual nitrogen time is 16, the same number from table three. Given that we're diving for 35 minutes, our total bottom time would be 51 minutes. So we can actually use table one to figure out what our residual nitrogen time would be for subsequent dives. So just for good measure, let's do a second example. We're gonna keep the first dive the same, but we're only gonna take a 45 minute surface interval this time. So let's go back and find M. Where is our 45 minute example? 45, we drop down. We're now an F diver. We wanna to dive to 50 feet for 30 minutes. So let's find F on here, find 50 feet, your residual nitrogen time would be 24 minutes. And we're going to dive for an actual bottom time of 30 minutes. So your total bottom time would be 54 minutes using the RAT formula, R-A-T. 50 feet for 54 minutes. There is no 54, we're gonna choose 57. And now we are an R diver. So another example, not having to flip back and forth, using the easy method to figure out residual nitrogen time and take that into account 
for your subsequent dive. Our hope here on Everything Scuba as instructors is to make what seems complex, simple and easy for our students to understand, but stuff that they can apply and make themselves better divers. So if this episode has helped you out and made this a little easier to understand, drop us a like down below. Help share the word of Everything Scuba with other divers. In our next episode, we're going to concentrate more on the types of questions that you're going to get on your open water question exams that relate to the RDP. We're going to talk about something called ANDL, your adjusted non-decompression limit, and also how do we calculate the minimum surface interval that we need to stay out of the water between certain dives. Click the link down below me and check that out.